One Piece chapter 1130 leaks are out guys and we are finally seeing Loki. He's an absolute powerhouse in this chapter and it even looks like he might be stronger than Luffy. The chapter starts on Elbaf's ship. Frankie tells the giants that they should stop searching because they've done everything they could. Jinbei even got the sharks to look around the nearby waters but they didn't find anything. So now the best plan is to trust their nakamas and head to Elbaf to wait. The giants agree and they keep sailing. The next leak jumps to Luffy's group. They come out of this road diorama thing and realize they've been inside a huge castle. Kind of like Lego castle in the middle of a snowy area surrounded by forests and mountains. The castle is up on one of the mountains and there is a super long bridge made out of huge tree branch stretching high up into the sky. The size of it all makes Nami feel dizzy. Suddenly they spot two people walking across the bridge towards the castle. It's Goldberg and Gerd, members of the new giant warrior pirates. And and Gerd has her giant owl Piper with her. As they walk, Gerd wonders why Hyrodin let such a strange guy into their crew. Goldberg explains it's because he's actually really good at navigating. Gerd says, I hate him. He's more of an embarrassment to Elbaf than Loki is. They are heading to the castle because Piper saw Rhodes Crow carrying a ship. A trespassing is illegal in Elbaf. Road has a habit of taking random ships, calling them trespassers and locking them up. Gerd mentions that if Road has been kidnapping people, she will report it to Jarl Sama, the old giant from Big Mom's past who's now about 400 years old. Nami hears the part about trespassing being illegal, so she tells everyone to stay hidden, while Goldberg and Gerd knock on the castle door, calling out for Road. The Straw Hat crew runs across the bridge with a forest full of giant wolves below. In the in the middle of the bridge, Luffy suddenly stops. He mentions that ever since they were inside the Block Kingdom, he's been sensing something powerful and he knows that Zoro and Sanji have probably noticed it too. He describes it as a scream of a man so powerful, it's like he can feel it throughout his entire body. Luffy decides he needs to check out where it's coming from. Sanji offers to stay with the group to keep Zoro from following, adding that this mosshead should never be allowed in any forest. Luffy tells everyone to keep going ahead then leaps down from the bridge into the forest below. This marks the first glimpse we get of Loki. Luffy's description of him as a scream of a man so powerful it shakes his entire body really shows just how strong Loki must be. If Luffy is reacting this way you know Loki's power is at a Yanko level at the very least. The next leak cuts back to the Elbaf ship where the new school delivers the world economy newspaper. Dory and Brogy are shocked by one of the reports. It claims that the giant warrior pirates attacked Egghead Island. Brogy is confused wondering why they would spread such a lies, but also jokes that the print is too small for him to read properly. Robin steps in offering to read it for them. According to the article, the giant warrior pirates have woken up from their hundred year slumber, joining forces with Yonko Strohat Luffy and they have set Egghead on fire. Both Dory and Brogy now have a one 1.8 billion berries bounty on their heads. The newspaper also reports that Luffy is the one responsible for killing Vegapunk, with a large picture of him in his Gear 5 form. Robin notices something strange in the photo, a clear X mark on Luffy's arm. She points it out mentioning that the mark always shows up when Luffy reaches his freest state. Frankie, confused, responds that he does not remember seeing that mark, adding that since Luffy's been moving around so much, it's hard to notice. Robin insists that it's strange, pointing out that despite Luffy's arm swinging in the photo, the X mark stays perfectly visible and she feels like she's seen it somewhere before. The X on Luffy's arm seems to be a reference to what the Straw Hats did with Vivi back in Alabasta. Since Robin was not part of the crew at the time, she did not participate in the X mark ritual. Her noticing it now might be a subtle nod for that moment. Considering that newspaper is from Morgans and Vivi is currently with Morgans, it's possible that she added X to Luffy's picture as a way to secretly communicate with the crew, letting them know that she's okay since her whereabouts are still unknown to the world. Anyway, Dory then remarks that it's surprising to see the straw hat Luffy is now on equal footing with red hair. Brogy follows up by mentioning that one of the younger warriors, Hyrudin, has apparently joined the crew. Kashi adds that despite everything, Kairudin is still the son of the king and he was always a wild kid. 
He explains that more people wanted to tag along, but only the elders came because there is some trouble going on back in Elbaf. The fact that they refer to Hyrudin as the king's son suggests that he could be the illegitimate son of the king of Elbaf, making him Loki's half-brother. It seems like Hyrudin could play a significant role in the arc. This might lead to the situation where Loki is defeated and Hyrudin steps in as the next prince or ruler of Elbaf. But anyway, regarding the trouble Kashi was talking about in Elbaf, it's explained that during Dori and Brogi's absence, Loki, the official son of the king, was born. Known as the Cursed Prince, Loki killed his father, King Harald, to claim a legendary devil fruit that had been passed down in the royal family. After taking the fruit, Loki ate it. The warriors of Elbaf were able to detain Loki, but now he is on the verge of breaking free, and they need the combined strength of all the warriors of Elbaf to restrain him. The next leak cuts back to Luffy. In a stunning double page spread, Luffy finds a huge giant tied up with massive chains in the middle of the snow. The giant is Loki. Loki is displayed as a tall and muscular figure with long hair braided in the front and a goatee on his chin. His arms are tattooed, though the designs are not clear. He wears a typical giant outfit, but his belt buckle features a Jolly Roger with a crown. He also wears a black helmet with two long horns, similar to the Marvel version of Loki, and carries an axe on his back. His eyes are covered with bandages, and he sticks his tongue out much like Doflamingo. Loki demands Luffy's name and Luffy identifies himself as the man who will become the king of the pirates. Loki questions the title of king, while Luffy asks where they are and who Loki is. Loki responds that this is Warland, the land of Elbaf's warriors, a place devoted to war and once the world's most powerful nation. In the final double page spread of the chapter, the long-awaited Elbaf is finally revealed. The scene shows a landscape of towering mountains, with a massive tree called Yggdrasil in the center that dwarfs everything around it. Waterfalls cascade down from the tree, and the middle layer of branches surrounding the trunk appears to be where the giants live, as there is a majestic castle and village located there. Cannons are positioned outwards for defense, and a giant sword pierces through the middle layer, reaching all the way to the ground. Loki continues speaking with a sinister smile. He declares, I am Loki, the sun god, and I will bring the end to this world. One Piece will be on break for two weeks. So, Loki's calling himself the sun god and saying he will bring an end to the world should already mean that there is no way Luffy and Loki will become friends or even temporary allies. This dude is most likely going to be new villain, but we will see. I will talk more about my opinion in the review video that I will upload in a day or two. Let me know what are your thoughts guys about the chapter in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to not miss my content. Until next time, keep reading, keep exploring and stay otaku.